Hi, I'm Bill Kiefer, and I'm with the Fraternal Order of Law Enforcement. Stand by, I have a very important message for you. I have been hurt and pained by others, and I will hurt and give them pain. I will make them suffer as I have suffered. The words of a sadist, one of the most disruptive elements in human society. The sadist does not want to quickly kill his victim. He needs the thrill of slowly torturing them as he watches and is gratified. To have complete mastery and power over another. To reduce them to helpless objects. To manipulate and humiliate. The screams of the victims prove that the sadist has power over another individual to humiliate them and have them beg for mercy, to enslave them, to have complete domination over another, taking pleasure of another person's pain, to inflict moral insanity on the innocent. That is his objective. A sadist then is characterized by cruel, aggressive, manipulative, and demeaning behavior directed towards others. Abusiveness and violence are common in the sadist social relationships because the sadist lacks concern for people and derives pleasure from harming or humiliating others, including animals. The profile of a mass murderer, spree killer, serial killer, wild random shooter by Bill Kiefer, former Deputy United States Marshal. Mentality of a mass murderer example is that I was taking a federal prisoner to Leavenworth and he said Marshall I wish an atom bomb would go off right here I responded that if that happened he would die instantly also he said I don't care having no regard to his own life he certainly had no regard for my life or any other life in the world not yours not mine not your children. Many mass shootings are motivated by revenge or envy. That's why many take place at a school or a workplace where shooters felt rejected. Mass murderers want to kill as many people as he or she can at that appointed time of action. Killers often exhibit risk factors that are generally tied to a history of abuse or lack of parenting a tendency to set fires or hurt animals, a sadist streak, and self-centeredness, and a lack of compassion. The killer lacks compassion and empathy for victims. Instead of seeing them as fellow human beings, they see the victim as an object, like a tissue paper used and then disposed of. School shooters, or any mass murderer, often harbor anger and paranoid delusions, have low self-esteem, and hang out with an outcast group, or just a loner. Usually a triggering event such as a lost job, or a falling out with a girlfriend, feeling that they just don't fit in, that finally makes them snap. They also tend to be obsessed with guns, violent video games or movies, in today's culture, more than ever before, the violence of video games consumes some individuals, young and old alike. Today's lack of personal contact. Instead, it is social media, cell phones, texting, and non-personal contact that deadens personal contact, social interactions. In retrospect, investigators uncover warning signs such as trying to recruit a peer or writing hateful stories. 
in many cases, students actually come out and say exactly what they're going to do. I'm going to come back with a gun and kill all of you. Since 2000, the internet, we live in a more toxic culture. Although mass murder has been with us as long as human beings have been on this earth. Dictators like Hitler, governments wage war, and on and on. Overwhelmingly, mass shooters are men. That's no surprise when you consider their self-professed motives. These killers often feel very powerless. The only way they can feel like they're somebody, that they're a man, is to get a gun and kill people. Or get even. And they are ready to be killed by police or kill themselves after they have killed as many people as they can. Our culture and media, such as violent movies and video games, only reinforce the notion that manhood is about getting and attaining power and social and sexual status. Violence is glorified as a way to get that power. Crime is based on the attainment of sex, money, and power in that order. Society doesn't necessarily teach constructive ways to deal with depression and disappointment either. And we provide very little to support to people at risk before they become violent. When a person feels like they can't get there from here, mentally then they feel they have nothing to lose and does not have any feeling for anyone standing in their way. Each mass shooting also holds the potential to spawn others because other would-be shooters see stories about the crimes in the newspaper and they want to emulate them. Nobody can predict who will become a mass killer. Mothers kill their own children and mass murderers have no conscience at all, such as family annihilators. They could be standing in line at your bank with you, eating at the food court in your mall, your favorite restaurant, or at your local theater. Millions of people will feel disjointed and vengeful, and may even lack empathy. I had personal contact with Charlie Manson on a daily basis in the Los Angeles court system as a marshal. His eyes were black, cold, and lifeless. He had no regard for anyone. He would kill you so much as look at you, and that is what he told me many times. It's only these kids who are really fundamentally struggling with their own identities that will take action for total destruction, including himself and his own family. If a mass murderer can happen at the Umqua Community College in the middle of the forest in Oregon, it can and will happen anywhere. Be aware of your surroundings. The importance of preventing these massacres before they happen. To identify potential mass murderers by past actions, like being a bully at the age of six years old, killing animals, and etc. One big thing is, you can't arrest a person before the crime is committed, except for the conspiracy of said act. It's not so much to catch shooters, because we know that's very difficult but actually to address very widespread problems facing millions and millions of children in today's society. And it gets worse every day. One school shooting begets another, and another, and then another. Mass murder, spree killers, serial killers. I don't see much of a difference. They should be convicted and executed, unlike Richard Ramirez and Charlie Manson, the Night Stalker still sitting on death row. We do live in a sick society. I am Bill Kiefer, former Deputy U.S. Marshal, graduate of the U.S. Air Force Security Police Academy, U.S. Marshals Academy, and the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Washington, D.C., and the Cal State Handling Disturbed Persons Certification. I've been the supervisor of Federal Witness Protection Program in Los Angeles, Hawaii, Long Island, New York, and Rhode Island, and author of the book, In a Pig's Eye, by Publish America. I'm Bill Kiefer. Thanks for watching.
it's going to Dwight and Forrest, uh, responsible to unknown race uh, subjects, possibly male and female, uh, of five to six unknown clothing. Do we know what kind of car that is they're breaking into? Yeah, it's a 16-foot white box truck.